Hello? Is that the massively OP breaking news hot desk? Yeah, I got the scoop of the century for you. I know what game Raf Costa's Playable World is making. No. I'm not an investigative journalist. I'll do you one better. I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I know what Raf Costa's making. All right, well, that's just rude. <laughs> Screw you, big game journalism. I'm going to have to break this story myself. In reality, it might be too early in the development of Playable Worlds game to really get hyped about what they're making, so I'm not sure mainstream news sites would be interested. This video is the result of a nerd following the development of an MMO probably a bit too closely. That being said, I'm not interested in wasting people's time, and the result of reading through the various blog posts from Playable Worlds development team over the past month has thrown up some tantalising tidbits about the nature of Raf Costa's presently unnamed MMO. The source of this is the game's lead designer, Greg Kostikian, who has been talking at length about game development in general. His two articles are well worth a read beyond what we can glean about the specifics of the game. I'll link them in the description. But it's the brief mentions of design in relation to the actual game being worked on that grab my attention most. So sit back and get ready for some nerdy tinfoil hat wearing micro analysis. Here we go. In the second part of Greg's two part article, he says this. For instance, in our game, characters can move in eight directions at three different speeds. Did you catch that? Did the game's lead designer just confirm that the game will be a 2D top down game? A directional movement is a feature of many classic RPGs, heck, Ultima Online itself. These games are usually isometric also, so I think we can infer that at least the number of 2D games where you're directly above the character are few and far between, and that would severely limit the range of animations available in an MMO where communication via emotes is so important. Greg actually refers to this later in the paragraph. You know the drill, bow, air kiss, somebody built all those animations, then he goes on to say that they're using mocap, so it sounds like whatever they're doing is going to be detailed, even if it is two-dimensional. I hope you're starting to trust my journalistic integrity at this point. But if you're not, what about this nugget about MOBAs? This scheme for procedurally generated worlds ensures that there are four equidistant starting areas connected by paths to create a world suitable for four-team MOBA-style combat. He said MOBA. He used the word MOBA. That means it's a MOBA, right? Okay, so you got me. This sentence doesn't actually mean the game is a MOBA at all, but did you catch the actual revelation earlier in the paragraph? Since we're doing procedurally generated worlds. That is really concrete information that hasn't been released by the team, at least in a high profile way, but it's important to someone who is interested in MMOs and sandboxes and that kind of thing. Coming from a person like Raf Costa in a team like Playable Worlds, procedural generation, it's a big deal. Mostly in terms of the kind of world that we can expect. It's a technique used when the scale of things is generally too big for a designer to handcraft. It was used in the development of Star Wars Galaxies, Massive Planets, for instance. If you're starting to picture a game that is something of a hybrid between Raf Costa's two most high profile games, the 2D isometric Ultima Online and the sprawling procedurally generated worlds of Star Wars Galaxies. You're not alone in that. I'm there with you. But I'm not done. I have more juicy information to impart. But before that, a word from my sponsor. Actually, I don't have a sponsor. I'm a 100% independent hotshot investigative reporter stroke YouTuber. But I also like to eat. So instead of buying a manscaped razor for your hairy balls or a useless VPN that is locked because websites are wise to them now, you might like to subscribe at this point in the video. It really helps me out, but you don't have to do it. Uh, I won't hold it against you. I'll remember forever, but I won't hold it against you. I promise. Coupled with what we know or surmise, because I'd like to reiterate that all of this is pure speculation on my part, I would like to mention an observation I made in a previous video about what playable worlds might be making. This was a while ago now, but I think coupled with some of the insights we've gleaned here, it's even more relevant. Lead character artist Steve Moore is another name that jumped out to me, not because I knew who he was before I read the blurb, but because of the games mentioned in that blurb. I've since done some research and he has an impressive resume, but Telltale's The Walking Dead and Ratchet and & Clank 
Obviously, I'm a layman gamer looking for clues about what a game from these people might look like, and I'm not sure how much influence the lead character artist has on the overall style of a game, but lead is in the title, right? And both the aforementioned games trumpet a certain cartoony style. Might this be a direction Playable Worlds is going in? It would certainly make sense given the popularity of things like World of Warcraft and, more recently, Fortnite. A cartoony, stylized game isn't to everyone's taste, but it brings in the crowds, and it generally means the game can run on a potato. So what do you think? Are we looking at a 2D, isometric, procedurally generated, cartoony MOBA? <laughs> Just scratch the MOBA bit, it's not a MOBA. But I want to hear what you think. Am I talking out of my butthole, or am I onto something here? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I've been Nap Yet, ace investigative reporter stroke YouTuber, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Quickly, get out, get out, get out while I'm still alive.